This lab introduces LabVIEW-based vision to build a vision-based measurement system that can measure motion. And we use a simple analog meter that has a needle whose motion can be uh, detected. And I'm first going to talk just a little bit about that device, remind you uh, how it works, and then uh, explain how we intend to measure the motion using vision-based measurements. Then I'll talk a, a little bit about LabVIEW-based vision VIs and uh, how data types are described, a little bit about image acquisition, and then along the way show you some working VIs that you might use in the lab. Okay. So this is the front panel of a simple volt meter, analog volt meter. Analog meaning it measures analog voltage. If you look at the back panel on one of these devices, it usually has a series resistor that's sized so that uh, the current that's induced in the circuit is um, such that when you, say, put in a full-scale voltage, in this case, for example, it's a 15-volt meter, you get a full-scale deflection, right? And you might uh, recall having seen these basic um, meters introduced in a physics class or circuits class. It's a nice device because we we're, we'll talk a little bit right now about how it works, you know, statically, if you like, or uh, with a DC voltage. But really, when you put in a DC voltage, there is a dynamic response, and it's because this does have a rotational dynamic system here. Actually, in this circuit, also in the, within this meter movement, there's also a little bit of inductance, but it's very very small. Uh, we'll talk more about this model in a, in a, in a subsequent lecture. Uh, but the needle is what we're interested in tracking uh, in terms of its position. It's very, very light, so we don't have any other sensors that we can put on here, obviously, to measure it. So uh, it's the motion of this needle that we want to um, measure using vision because it's a non-contact type measurement. Um, just to re remind you maybe a little bit, I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but this is a real simple DC circuit, the way we'll analyze it. You know, you put in an input voltage. This, we want to see what's the series circuit that, uh, sorry, series resistance that would be needed here to size this, um, or to set the full scale deflection. And this this symbol over here represents what's called the galvanometer galvanometer movement or the meter movement. But it's um, in in the in the type of modeling that you might have done in your dynamic systems class. This is a an electromechanical conversion that we typically model with a gyrator, uh, and I'll show you that as I said next time. So really when this is, has a DC current and it's deflected and not moving, this voltage across here, sometimes we might call that a, like a back EMF, uh, it, it goes to zero. So you can see when we build this just simple KVL description, right? we have Vn minus the voltage drop across the series resistor, voltage drop across internal meter resistance, which we know, assume we know, and uh, of the voltage drop across the galvanometer movement. This goes to zero, so you can see we can size our series uh, given that we know what we want the current to be for full scale. The input full scale voltage, this goes to zero, and we can find, for example, for this particular device, it's 15 kilo ohm resistor. So this really, uh, with the system designed the way it was intended, we can think of, of, of a simple static predictive model uh, as being, well, I can get a particular angle, for example, 90 degrees here, if I put 15 volts in here, so it's a real simple constant here that that relates the input voltage to the deflection, the angular deflection from the zero value to whatever. So if you put 10 volts, for example, right, you'd get two-thirds uh, deflection and so on. So that's the way this device is designed to work. Um, just so you can demonstrate your understanding of that, here's a simple little pre-lab to size a series resistor for a different case where let's say we wanted the full scale deflection for 90 degrees say to be uh, 10 volts, so just work out what kind of series resistance uh, um, you'd get for that. Again, just a very simple application of that same little design calculation. So if you think about it, again very simple device. It's designed to work precisely this way. To you know, this, It's a measurement of voltage that's indicated by this uh, needle position. So uh, as long as there are no physical changes, the needle position is always going to respond the way you, you intend. 
because we're going to be using this system to talk about control, we're going to refer to this as an open loop control design. In other words, we uh, would like to get a certain position. What's the voltage that we need to get there? By sizing the parameters in this meter, we can um, determine, you know, what you know what what that relationship is. And so it's a very simple. Um, a way to predict uh, you know, what the voltage should be, say, to, to give you a certain deflection. Um, now, we, when we talk about an open loop control system, these systems work well as long as nothing changes, right? So if, if there's some variation in the parameters or there's some external disturbance, usually, right, you're not going to get what you expect. And that's one of the drawbacks of not having some kind of feedback control. So later we'll discuss that. And, in another lab uh, on closed loop control and how closed loop control by using feedback can compensate for changes in the system or disturbances and makes the system insensitive to those effects and gives you better performance. Right? For now though what we want to do is build a measurement system that we can use to evaluate what the system is doing and again that's to measure. We want to measure this angular position uh, so we want to get this, we want to determine this input-output relation. It's not unlike some of the calibrations that you've run, uh, except now you're getting to figure out how would I make this measurement using vision, okay? Uh, you can also think of the relationship between the, in, the output over input uh, as sort of a transfer function, which is a concept that you may have learned about in your dynamic systems uh, class as well. And in this lab, what we're going to do again is use lab based vision to me measure theta. And we're also going to give an opportunity to, we haven't had yet an opportunity to use the analog out on the MyDAC. And so you'll use the analog out to actually drive this voltage. One of the nice things about this little meters is they only require about a milliamp to, um, to, to actuate. So we don't need any kind of power amplification to drive the system. A lot of times in a, with a with most control systems, you need quite a bit of current, so you might need power amplification from the DAC, for example, from a microcontroller, or in this case from an analog out, because because they're very low current. In order to drive an actuator here, you just need a very low current um, uh, signal. So if the objectives of this first lab then is learn about LabVIEW. Uh, about image analysis and image capture and run a few experiments um, so that you can learn how to use those basic VIs and I'm going to show you some example VIs and use then build an instrument a virtual instrument where you can characterize this meter system um, determine the static gain which is the relationship between theta and the input voltage right? and then given time demonstrate the concept of open loop control in other words show how well now that you have a model for that system, show how well, for example, let's say you wanted to position this uh, needle at a certain place at a certain time, show how you can use that model to determine what that input voltage should be and see how well you can follow a desired trajectory. Okay, it's kind of a first step in thinking about how you control the system. So before we go and talk about more about vision in particular, think about how you would use measurements from a vision system from what's called machine vision to determine this angular position and here I'm actually showing two superimposed angular positions of the needle with this little uh, bob at the end of the needle that we've attached just to make it more visible to the vision system a little bit easier to detect also the background we've attached a white background so that the only image uh, the only object that's in the, in the in the field of view, if you like, is is this bob, and it's going to be moving back and forth. So the needle starts off at a zero position here, um, and uh, by measuring any of these points here, you can determine theta. And so actually, that's part of that's a pre lab too. Is say that you uh, will develop a vision system that allows you to determine the vertex position, which is the point of rotation, and also the initial position of the bob, and then at any time you can also measure the XY position of, of the needle. 
given those fixed positions, those known positions, and this new position, you can then find any of these values. For example, you can find the length, the effective length of the needle. A should be equal to B, right? But then also you can find this distance or this angular position theta. So come up with the basic geometric relations for that, and you're going to implement that into a lab view of the eye. Okay?